can discrimination be a force for good? 0207 224 2000 or text 81333 starting a message with the word London. Now there's an, an article um, where Kirsty Walk, who joined the BBC in 1976, um, she was saying that the new the news night host says she may not be where she is today without BBC's positive discrimination policy. And it's if you look at her her life, she started in 76 where they were looking to recruit women. Then they wanted more senior women. Then they wanted Scottish women. And now they want older women. So she's always been in the right place at the right time. One of the things she's saying is that if you want to go into the industry now as a young woman, you should be confident in yourselves and seek out mentors. Well, I'm very old and my mentors, are, most of them have died now, but certainly... When I was acting, I used to turn to Betty Marsden, some of you may remember her from Round the Horn, who was fantastic, who used to, she used to give me notes and tell me how to do certain things. And then when I went into television, I felt very much on my own. Television, it's much more female, but it certainly wasn't when I started. I was asked uh, back in the day and I was never given a desk. I used to write all my scripts sitting on the floor. And I didn't have the confidence to actually say to the bosses, hold on. So can discrimination, when it's done properly, be a force for good? 0207 2000 text 81333, starting your message with the word London. If you are in the police force, positive discrimination, trying to get in black and Asian uh, policemen and police women, they're still struggling. That's positive discrimination, isn't it? 0207 2000 using old birds like me, that's positive discrimination, isn't it? Text 81333, start your message with the word London. Now, my guest, Sonny Hundar, writer, journalist and lecturer, think, thinks something... Um, well, let me talk. Good morning, Sonny. Morning. Morning. Thank you so much for joining me. What do you make of positive discrimination, good or bad? No, I think it's good, uh, as you said rightly, that it can uh, you know, help in certain circumstances. It can... Um, uh, fill a gap where it's needed badly because you know people might not have been promoted or come into the industry for various reasons. I think it's a good idea, definitely. I mean, so sometimes the only way to correct a wrong is to over, over do something in the other way, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, not always. Um, like, for example, I opposed. Um, positive discrimination in getting uh, I think minority candidates on um, sh- uh, shortlists uh, for example within the Labour Party there was this discussion and I said that was going to backfire so I think it works in certain circumstances and it can't work in other circumstances Well that's what I want to talk to you about Sonny why mm. would you oppose that in the Labour Party context what's the difference between that and for instance using me as an old bird yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, when you're trying to collect, connect, uh, correct even, gender diff- uh, gender imbalances, then it's uh, much easier to do uh, positive discrimination because you, you're picking from a larger pool. Uh, you, you know, know clearly that there is a problem there because, um, you know, women are not represented in half-half. Whereas when it comes to ethnic minorities, I, I think there is more, especially in politics, there are, there may be other different uh, other reasons why people are not uh, in politics, uh, and you know also what you don't want is a situation where people are seen as you know having come up only because of their background of their race, and that creates more tension. So, so I think that yeah, go on. No, I, I was just saying that you know I do think that the for example the Labour Party and other parties have to find ways in which to promote more diversity within their ranks, and that includes not just race, but also uh, gender, obviously, but even class. But I think you've got to find other ways of doing it, because if you... Well, that, it, that, that's the point, isn't it? I mean, other ways of doing it is what keeps um, confusing people and yeah. causing problems. What are the ways of encouraging people to do jobs that don't necessarily include an ethnic minority or an age or a gender. How do you encourage that? Well, you can find ways to widen your selection process, for example. You can, you know, if you um, are employing people, then you could say, okay, you know what, we want to specifically have a recruitment process which um, 
reaches out to ethnic minorities and get more of them to apply and see if we can get the best of the crop, uh, you know, to apply to us. Or you can uh, specifically help um, and uh, sort of uh, develop candidates, you know, uh, from different backgrounds. So, for example, working class people, you can try and have a scheme where more working class people apply but also are given coaching so they can apply as candidates. And then, then they, at the selection process, they you know, are judged like everyone else, but at least they're being helped initially to get to that stage. So you can see, you, know, you can give them help where they might not have in the past. People who are opposed to positive discrimination are the kind of folk that will say that, you know, he didn't get there on his merit, she didn't get there on her merit, she got there because she was a Scottish woman and they were looking for Scottish women and so on. How do you silence those people? Well, I think, well, I mean, firstly, I say that, you know, um, there are massive imbalances here that need to be corrected um, and there's sometimes no other way to do that. I mean, gender imbalances which have persisted over hundreds of years, especially, for example, in Parliament, you know, is a good example where you can clearly see that, uh, you know, the, the institution is failing in representing the population. Um, how do you silence someone like that? I think they generally say, well, you know, the best, um, you know, the, the best is not coming to the forefront because of positive discrimination. And I generally say, well, if you look at the crop of um, politicians, you can clearly tell that they're not picking from the best anyway. So, you know, <laughs> in many cases, what's happening is... Um, the worst talent is coming forward. You know the you, you know the Peters principle. Do you know that one? That no. you you rise to the level of your own incompetence, which is what right. many people are saying is happening in all sorts of places now. That people are yeah. rising to the level of the incompetence of where they are. But uh, well, but also you know, in fact, by having these imbalances in place, we're automatically stopping proper uh, meritocracy. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and people say, oh, you know, these not, they're not going on their own merit. Actually, it's the other way around. If it was on on merit, then you'd see a lot more women in parliament. But it's because it's not, and because it's dependent on uh, the, the fact that you have more time, for example, maybe, or you've uh, come in because of your contacts. The people who are actually not of the best ability get forward. And that's why I think is the best argument against it. No, no, Sonny, let me... In the 21st century, we know, I was talking to Paul Ross this morning, you know, my daughter went to university, oh, four times I talked about it today, and she has come out with a 27 grand debt. His daughter has gone to university up in Scotland, no debt whatsoever. There's no... And, and what, what we have is a situation where I think it's class-based in many ways, isn't it? That many yeah. women now are saying, I don't want to go into politics because I don't like the model that I'm seeing. Um, yeah. Now, if there was positive discrimination and there was childcare and there was uh, a different uh, routine, a diurnal pattern, do you think that more women would want to go in? Or do you think in the 21st century things are shifting so much that positive discrimination has got lost in all this? Um, both are true. I think that things have shifted a lot, that positive discrimination has been lost. I mean, uh, within the Labour Party, again, taking an example because they actively have positive discrimination in favour of women, you know, what they don't do is say, we're going to uh, specifically hire women for seats. What they do is say, instead, we're going to have an all-women shortlist and then pick the best out of that. You know, and that way you can um, have lots of women apply and then you pick the best crop from that. Is, is that things. a better way of doing it, Sonny? I think that's a better way of doing it because then you're still picking from a wide range of women and, you know, you're encouraging more women to apply and then you pick the best one because you still obviously want uh, highly talented people. So, Or you, for example, develop schemes where more women or ethnic minorities or people from working class backgrounds 
can apply and, you know, uh, talk about what the process is like, for example, to get into politics, what what is required, how you can impress, um, you know, selection, selection judges, et cetera, et cetera. So you can find other ways. And if a party or an institution says, oh, you know, we've tried, but we can't do it, I would say they're lying. They haven't tried hard enough. There are lots of other ways in which you can get people from different backgrounds to apply um, and then pick the best out of them, uh, of their background. Yesterday there was the the research that came out to saying that uh, one in three or one in six people uh, would describe themselves as maybe being racially prejudiced. Uh, mm. In the 21st century, do you think in the UK we still have issues with class, with race, with with sexism? Are those issue, issues still lapping at our feet? Yes, of course. I mean, if anyone tried to deny that, I think they'd be laughed out. But I do think that we have become more tolerant, and we are probably one of the most tolerant nations on earth. And, you know, things have changed massively over the last 30 years, and I think that's a good thing. You know, no one's wiped out discrimination, in, or, you know, whether it comes to class or race or gender entirely. But we're making progress and I think it's important for us to have this conversation, discuss it and say, you know, where are the problems, how can we deal with them and have a sensible discussion about it, which I think we do actually do quite well in Britain. Um, you know, then um uh and then you can move forward. I think that, you know, sometimes people do become too defensive and say, Oh, you know, you can't talk about race anymore or you can't talk about uh inequality anymore, etc. and and then you do have people sort of getting frustrated and then not being able to talk about this issue. But I, I think class discrimination has always been a massive issue in this country. Well, there were, um, there were those who would say that social mobility is, is alive and well and that we've got nothing to worry about. But as you say, Sunny Handa, we must keep discussing where's the problem and how do we fix it. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, how being a female and Scott helped my career, says Kirsty Walk. Newsnight host says she may not be where she is today without BBC's positive discrimination policy. Now, Sunny Handal has just said uh, we have to identify the problem and then we have to le- work out how to deal with it, which is all about communication. And if you're in a situation where you're trying to get something and the suffragettes threw themselves or fell under horses and people out in South Africa will will for hours queue round the block to get their vote because it means something to them. As we go through a transition in our country, um, we are women are saying, "What about me?" in a different way, and men are saying, "What about me?" in a different way, uh, and that's why I'm talking now to guest Mike Buchanan. He's founder of Justice for Men and Boys Political Party. A jolly good morning to you, Mike. Good morning, Vanessa. Uh, not Vanessa, it's Jenny, but you can call me Vanessa if oh, you I'm like. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's absolutely right. That's You're discriminating. Everybody has to be Vanessa at nine through to drop. No, no. Listen, Mike, thanks for, for joining me. Um, discrimination, can it ever be right in your book? No, it can't. And I, I'm intrigued that Kirsty Walk is, is trotted out an example of why this is a good thing. She's a perfect example of why you shouldn't have special treatment for women. She what? recently presented an, an hour-long outrageous piece of feminist propaganda about the way women suffer from sexism and misogyny. Not a single word about the sexism suffered by men, which has far more grave consequences. Not a word about misandry, the hatred of men, which is far more common than misogyny. Not a word on denial of fathers' access to kids, the the non-existent provision of support for male victims of of domestic violence. She is a perfect example of of, of, of a problem. Well, she's one in a sea of male problems, women would say. But let, just before we move on and pick this apart, why did you find justice for men? Why did you think that that was necessary? And what is the boys' political party? OK. Um, the, the, the reason I founded Justice for Men and Boys was... was, to, was um, it's, it's the only political party in the world, by the way, which fights for the human rights of men and boys. Because in, in Britain today... There are, I mean, in our, in our consultation document, we, we, we have 20 areas outlining where the state disadvantages men and boys, um, usually to advantage women and girls, and there isn't one area where, where the state um, disadvantages women and girls, not one. I don't know what you mean. 
Give me well, details. You know, Give me details sorry? is what I'm saying. Give me some details. OK, well, if you take things like, you know, I mean, fathers... I mean, the, the vast majority of parents who are, who, who are stopped um, from seeing their, their, their children after relationship breakdowns are fathers. Right. And, and the state enables vindictive mothers to deny them that, that access. Right. If, if, um, um, if we take domestic violence, 40% of... It's known that 40% of victims of domestic violence are men, um, and yet 99.6% of the refuge places in, in the country go, go to women. Yeah, now, listen, you know, there's that old thing, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I would say men are from Earth, women are from Earth, deal with it. So here we are rubbing alongside together, you as a man, me as a woman, and aren't you operating discrimination by having a party that is just for boys and blokes? Not at all, because I, I repeat the point that the state is, is, is overwhelmingly pro-female and anti-male. I mean, but we men don't and have women a... Are, we... Men and women are different. I mean, if you go back... Um, there's a there's a there's a there's a, there's a, uh, um, a renowned sociologist, Dr. Catherine Hakim, who in 2000 um, um, presented a paper called um, Preference Theory. Now, pre- her research has found that four in seven British men are work-centred, but only one in seven British women. So, 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 you know, how how would that not translate into things like the number of women on corporate boards, the number of women in Parliament? I mean, the the, the proportion of women in Parliament is considerably higher. The, the proportion of women who apply to the MPs. But why so already... Given that we are different, why can't we agree that we're different and still work together? And if we see that there is an imbalance, balance it up. Rebalance it. But, but the only way you can do that is through positive discrimination. And which, you're which, sa- is, which, which is illegal and damn right it should, it should be illegal. But you're so, discriminating. What, 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 so, 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 I mean, if you're saying there should be more female MPs, you're basically saying that although there's far, far fewer women applying to be MPs, they should be preferenced over, 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 over men. No, I'm saying that we should all be equal, is what I'm saying. I don't but, think... But, and I'm asking why is it uh, wrong to positively discriminate for women, but not wrong to positively discriminate for justice for men and the boys' political party? It's, well, it's not an issue of my party. It's, it's, the, the, the issue is that, um, to, to go back to preference theory, that uh, four times as many men are work centred as women, and that will that will obviously translate into differential outcomes. There is no problem to be solved here. Well, I d- okay. There aren't as many women busting through the glass ceiling. Would you accept that? Well, I'd, 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 I'd very happily talk about that because I also run um, a campaign for merit in business, right? Which which campaigns against the threat of gender quotas for women on on co- corporate boards. The, the threat. Wait the a minute. Let, wait a minute. Let's just use your look at your language. The threat of quotas of women. Yes. The well. The the, the reason so many women are being appointed to FTSE 100 boards today is that the government is threatening threatening them with legislated quotas next year if they don't hit 25 percent. Um, and so so lots of poorly qualified women are being appointed now. I've given evidence to House of Commons and House of Lords inquiries. Showing the, showing the evidence that when you drive up the proportion of women on boards, financial performance declines. Now, how have they responded? It, re- it recently became evident that in time they'll be targeting the FTSE 350 and raising the target to 50%. This is insanity. And it's insanity for society? I mean, of course it is. I mean, it's, 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 it's taking away a cornerstone of, of, of capitalism, you know, the, 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 the freedom of companies to appoint directors um, as they see fit. And, and, you know, I look, I look forward to people like, like, like Sonny coming up with, with a left-wing alternative to capitalism for generating wealth. I d- didn't hear that. You look forward to people like Sonny what? So, you know, there, 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 there's this attack on business. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, the, the only reason that, 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 you know, it creates a great deal of employment, it, 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 you know, and, and the, the, the idea that pushing up more women on boards, a price worth paying is corporate financial decline, to me is just insane. But if, if, if we offer different things, you know, women give birth and men often design guns and bombs. That's a kind of basic old argument that we give life and you take it away. Wouldn't it be better if we all work together? That's just, that, that, that's, that's just, that, I'm, I'm speechless. I mean, that's just, why, that's, why are you speechless? Are you really saying, I mean, let's go, let's go back to the real world. Are you really saying it's a price worth paying to have more women on boards? That, that those companies' performance declines. Well, I don't think that's the issue. 
I don't the think that's the issue. <laughs> I think if you have a board, I don't think that's the issue, Mike. If you've got a board and it, and a, a company isn't working, you will get the best people. But if you don't have a shortlist that includes women as well as men, black as well as white, gay as well as straight, you won't necessarily get the right person if you're only ever going for the white supremacist state. <laughs> Male, um, I don't male. See, I, don't see, I, I don't see anyone campaigning for more, for more gay directors. It's, it's, it's always women that, that, that benefit from these things. There's, there's all this grand talk of equality and diversity, but it's always special treatment. It's, it's always driving up um, women who won't work as hard. I'm, I'm currently reading the uh, biography, Charles Moore's biography. Wait, wait, I, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm a little bit... You were speechless, now I'm being speechless. We're playing <laughs> ping-pong here. You actually... Uh, women, you say women don't work so hard. I'm saying that four times as many men are work centred. I, I, yeah, but it depends what the work is. I mean, a woman in the home bringing up the children, doing the housework, do you deem that work? Of course it is. It is work. So I would say yeah. that, that there are more women being work centred than there are men doing two or possibly three jobs. Well, that's, that's, that's hardly the same work as being a FTSE 100 director, is it? Why? What's the difference? They're not, do, they're not serving humanity brilliantly no. at the moment, are they? Well, I think the difference is there's millions of, of women who are perfectly good housekeepers, and there, there aren't housewives, and, and there aren't there aren't millions of people who could who could cut it as a FTSE hundred director, are they? I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't know. I, 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 the thing I wanted to throw back at you is that uh, are men who decide to be house husbands are they as good as women? And there's there's two or three of them sitting in the room now as uh, looking at me. Um, do we? I, it's almost as if you're suggesting that we have to go back to the old way of living, where women do women things and men do men things. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying men and women are different. That translates into different life choices, and that translates into different outcomes. I mean, it's got so crazy on, on the work front that at Brunel University today, female postgraduate engineering students get an additional grant of £15,000 annually solely on the grounds of gender. Now, um, um, we might need more engineers, but why in God's earth do we need more female engineers? I mean, for one thing, it's known the vast majority quit the profession when they have children. And if, you know, and if, 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 if we look at the NHS, that's, that's in crisis largely because um, female doctors work about half, half the number of hours over a career as male doctors. Do you like women, Mike? Of course I do. I mean, but here am I presenting facts, and you're coming up with a shaming tactic. No, no, I'm not shaming. I'm literally asking whether you like us as a well, as like, a force. I mean, I mean a, little, a little bit. You know, I, I like I like some, I love some, and I don't like some. It's the same as men. So you don't it like is, the it is, it is it is a pathetic shaming tactic when when someone comes out with with reasoned arguments to 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 accuse them of misogyny. Oh well, no, you see, but you see, I'm an unreasonable woman. That's the point. I have no reason in me. Guest, Mike Buchanan, founder of Justice for Men and Boys Political Party. Thank you so much for joining me. You've been listening to that. What is your response? To be honest, uh, he has many, many important points that I can't argue. I don't have the facts in front of me and he's a very clever man.